Hey guys, it's Astri here with a new tutorial and it's a blender tutorial. Yay! So, um, I have been helping out my friend Christy with her blender skills and I'm really proud of her. Uh, and, um, I wanted to show a video on how I make simple shirts. Now, you probably see my old speed videos of me making them, which were pretty bad <laughs> because I used the cube method and I'll use a different method which you've seen in my more updated videos and live streams of me using the cylinder which thank you to Annie Coco for giving me that suggestion on modeling so yeah um so I'm going to make this very clear I'm going to assume you already know the basics of Blender. If you don't, please go and watch a tutorial on the basics of Blender and get yourself familiar with the program because I cannot explain every little thing I do. I'll try to, but I can't. And yesterday I did get the screencast um, add-on. Thank you, Christy, for saying I should do that. So. I did it so I'm going to loading the base now you can use any base you want you can use your own base that you've made from scratch or a pre-made base doesn't matter unless it's like a pre-made make sure you credit credit <laughs> okay so I'm just gonna loading the cliche TDA or TDA whatever if I can find one uh. I'll just use this one. Okay, so I have the base loaded here. Um, it's purple. So I'm going to turn screencast on. So to get this menu, I hit N. I'm going to take off the armature, take off the tune, and take off the sphere. If it's still purple, um, you may need to find the textures and load them up yourself. I'm not going to do that because mine showed up on their own. So I'm going to hit N again. And now I'm going to get to the modeling process. So I'm going to go to create. This is just how I do it. There are shortcuts that you can get, but I prefer doing it this way. I'm going to use the tools to move it make sure to move it in object mode and not edit mode it makes life easier so I'm gonna go front view also to get into this kind of orthographic view hit 5 to get into it because it makes modeling easier So you know, it doesn't show up all of the controls I hit, so this is why you need to understand Blender yourself. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to go to the faces option, delete the faces, go back to vertices back to the front. I'm gonna move this down here. Scale on the X. Go to the side, scale on the Y. To the best I can at the moment. I don't need to be perfectly precise. Make a loop cut. Do that. Now I'm gonna go into object mode, click on the base, edit mode, I'm gonna remove the doubles, and I'm gonna select this down here, uh, go and select the arms so I can see what I'm doing.
Oh. I'm gonna hit P, selection, and then I'm gonna go into this and hide them. And now I can see what I'm doing better. So now I'm gonna go back into edit mode here. I'm gonna hit B and delete these vertices so I can mirror it with a mirror modifier. I'm gonna hit clipping. I'm gonna turn that on so I can see both sides. Um, I'm going to hit the subdivision modifier, make it so I can see its structure, I guess. I'm going to hit O to get into perspective, proportional editing. And I'm just going to make it fit around the base as closely as I can, but not too close where it clips. I'm also going to go back into object mode, go to tools, and change the smoothing, uh, shading to smooth. I'm also going to go into the materials, this is completely optional. I'm going to add a new material, I'm going to change its color, just so I can see it different to the mesh. I'm going to add a new look up. When it comes to modeling, you always have to make sure that you add new loot cuts wherever you can and wherever it's like best to add new loot cuts because um, you're going to need to refine the shape of it with loot cuts and if you put them in the wrong places, it'll look weird. So I'm going to go into the side view. And I'm going to select the vertices that are underneath the uh, the arms. And I'm going to hit smooth vertex so then it rounds it out. Then I'm going to adjust it again. And now I just select everything, hit C. Use the middle mouse button to deselect these. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm going to fit it so then it does this, just so then I can make it warp around the shoulders. Now this technique probably isn't the best, I can admit sometimes it messes up, but it's the way that I'm more comfortable with, and I can somehow get it <laughs> to work. But yeah. Um, now I'm going to smooth out the entire mesh and I'm going to fix anything that it makes weird by scaling it on the Z and then hitting zero so then it goes uh, straight. And now it's all about just trying to make it fit around the body mesh as best as you can. Whilst making some judgments on where you should add the next loop cut just so then it smooths it out. Make sure to select some vertices where it might look weird and smooth them out and then try and readjust them better. Now I'm probably doing this in such a horrible way that makes rigging more difficult, but if you can make it work then I say go for it, unless of course you're planning to work in a professional company that does 3, uh, 3D stuff with 3D modeling, try to perfect and understand topology, which is probably uh, a weak point of mine. I don't really focus on topology as much as I should, 
but I mean at the moment it's not too important for me Just smoothing it out. Okay, and I'm going to turn the arms back on so I can see them, so then I can make the sleeves. So, I'm going to turn off proportional editing. I'm going to select the sleeves. I'm also going to turn this off. I'm going to look at it, it from all views. I'm going to make some adjustments to the mesh. And then I'm just going to extrude it and then rotate on the Y and move it as best as I can. And then make any adjustments where I can. Smooth it out. I'm also going to make it smaller. And keep adjusting it. Adding loop cups when I can. Now I'm going to add some detailing. So I just do very little detailing by adding loop cuts and just adjusting where they are just so I can make some very subtle looking creases. I'm also going to rotate the shirt a little bit like that. And now I'm going to I'm going to do something that's kind of similar to hemming in real life. So I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to shrink it. And then I'm going to extrude up, shrink and move in. This just makes it so then the corners of it are rounder and more clean looking than just straight lines. It's it's up to personal preference to be honest. This is how I like to do it. I even do it to the sleeves. And the color. Uh, a tip, make sure to look at your mesh from all sides and try and adjust the position of them because obviously things like this can happen. I'm gonna smooth out the sleeves a bit more because I'm not liking how they look. And then I'm going to rotate on the Y. And I'm also going to scale on the Y. 
just so then they're a bit wider this side. I'm gonna move them. And yeah, so keep adjusting your mesh as you go, just so then you can get it so you like the way it looks. If you plan to make your stuff for download, then you might want to try and consider what other people might think of it, but don't take too much into consideration with other people, because that way you may not improve if people don't like it, because uh, not everyone can give good constructive criticism on things. Even if they try, sometimes people just can't really <laughs> give critiques that help. Might add some very slight detailing to the sleeves. I'm going to make it actually look like it's a rolled up sleeve because why not? Another tip, try not to overdo it with vertices because whatever program you use does have a vertice, not really a limit, but what it has to handle because some programs can't handle too many vertices. So with MMD, try and keep it a, a minimal. Okay, since it's a rolled up esque kind of sleeve, I'm going to make an adjustment here so that it's smaller, but not too small where it will clip. Okay, so that's how you make the shirt. Now I'm going to go on to UV mapping it. Um, think of UV mapping as the seams on any item of clothing that you wear if you're making clothing. Sometimes though that doesn't always work out, especially if like you have a certain aesthetic like I do then you might need to adjust it and find what works best for you. So I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm actually going to save it. Make sure to save frequently. <laughs> okay. So I like to make um, seams uh, at the edges. Also, I need to change the music. Donut hole. Okay, and I also like to make it at the back. Just because it's more out of the way there. And then I'm gonna select it all. Oh. Go to unwrapping and then go to the UV editing. This is where you will see your UV 
uh, edit. Now you can see that I haven't fully finished, so I'm gonna do it at the beginning of the sleeves. Lock seam. I'm gonna do it in the center of the sleeves, but get rid of this. And I'm gonna do it there too and get rid of that. Actually, I'm a. I'm gonna just leave it like that. I don't need to make a cut there. So as you can see, it's only one side, which you can keep if you want to, but I prefer to have it both sides. So we're gonna go back into default. I'm gonna get into object mode and hit apply on both mirror and subdivision. And going back, you can see that it's applied them except for mirror, so if you want to apply the mirror, just unwrap it again. And now make adjustments to the position of your UV mapping, because sometimes it can be a bit weird. There you go. And now to save your UV, um, so as an image, you go to UVs and export the UV layout. Um, so, simple shirt. And I'm gonna make a new folder for UV. You can keep the UVs if you want to, it's helpful. For if you want to remake the texture, then it's always handy to keep the UV. So now, there are different ways of exporting it. Um, I do have a tutorial out for exporting normally in different ways, but because I didn't get rid of the armature of this base, I should be able to export it just fine. So select your mesh, select the base, I'm going to get rid of that, control P and then object. And then I'm going to export VMX and then export. I'm going to save it, exit out of that. And you can see it saves the texture of the body too. If I open it up, There you go, it doesn't keep its color. So I'm gonna change it. Give it its texture and tunes. I'm gonna text, text. Now, when you come to the texturing part, just texture how you would want a texture. Um, find your style. It doesn't have to be like super realistic if you don't want it to. It could be super simple. I do very simple shading. And I also do very incorrect shading, but yeah. So I'm going to do a quick texturing and then I'll show you the texture after. Okay, so it's now textured. I can add some tunes and spheres, but yeah. And now it's just rigging, which I'm not going to show you because it's very easy. Uh, there are other tutorials on how to rig in MMD. If you're doing it for another program, you'll need to look at other um, tutorials for rigging and stuff. So yeah, if this helped, leave a like. If you know, for some reason, you like this video. <laughs>
I don't know. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if it helped. Subscribe for more videos that I post whenever I feel like it. I do not have a schedule. I do die out <laughs> often for a few months, but I do live stream quite often. I'll also be live streaming on Twitch a bit more, so be sure to follow that too. Uh, I have a Discord server that is open, so join that if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream that I do. Bye!